Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So today we've got a system from the user Camarara D Pickle Horb. I hope I'm saying your name right. Um, and without further ado, let's go see what they have sent us. So, it's called the Frez Frezol system. Let's just go ahead and see what they have prepared for us here. Right, hello. Right. Oh, we got reading. We got a lot of reading. Oh my god. That's a lot of reading. Okay, so where are we? Let's go to the star. And there it is there. So it's pretty wild. Okay. Hello there. The star system which you're in seeing now is told to hold life in various different planets. The star of the system is named Fren Frezol because of Andrew Frez. The interstellar explorer who found the system with a crew of 21,000... 350 people arrived here with a fast and light spaceship including his wife and his cousins, nephews and nieces. Here are present nine planets and some other uh, with he with he planets be or with their planets being Rosados, White Titan, Drem, Planace, Lamatus, Laren Oh man. I can't say that one. Giganti, Gigantium, Attractor and Nibiru. Let's get to them. Okay. So first up, we got this one here as a probe. That's just a probe. Okay, cool. So the first of the planets, Rosodes, a small planet named by its strangely fissure coloured atmosphere that is rich in CO2, ethane, methane, water, vapour and sulphur dioxide. Unfortunately, because of solar wind, it is losing the beautiful atmosphere which covers its surface in its furrows at one time during the formation of the system. This was a moon. Okay, so there it is. Looking underneath, that is what it looks like. Okay. Nice atmosphere colour there as well, definitely. Next up we have got a Barry Centre here, okay. So what is going on here? Oh, where are we? Hey! Oh, there's one of them. Let me look onto the planet, what is going on? I completely, I can't scroll out, what the heck? Let's just move to something quickly. That's better, okay, right, that's weird. Camera completely put me stuck there, that's very, very strange. Right, so where is it? Barry Centre, let's go down here, right. There we go. Let's just select the planet. Right, so. White Titan Drem Binary System. So here we go. An interesting system whose story is strange, essentially. The system was formed when White Titan collided with a Mars-sized planet during the formation of the inner solar system that launched material into the space-created rings, which particles collided with each other, creating a planet small that gathered material and grew bigger and bigger. Finally throwing away the rest of the ring material out of the orbit, it confirmed that two planets had life. Cool, so there's uh, this one and then that one. So this is the White Titan and then this is Drem. So there they are there in that binary, looking good. Next up we have got this one here, Planice. Oh my god, look at the description for that. Oh my god. This must be one of the planets with life, yeah. City lights, massive continent there. This is the planet that Andrew's crew created or arrived, lived and still lives with their descendants, that Earth. That by 4,300 were escalated to be 1 million. With their arrival being in 4,019. Okay, so time has passed. Fascinating life forms live here. Like giant individualistic funguses. Intelligent, ready, semitic mosque. Mon who's, I'm not sure what, uh, what that word is. Who develop culture and society and bioluminescent algae. That uh, made entire ecosystems in caves. Its name origin becomes after the play of the Portuguese word planace. Planisi, which means plains. It also has a moon named uh, Fre Freslin Fresluna, which is somewhere. There it is. Ah, that's where we started. Cool. A fun fact in only 500 years, the descendants of Andrew's crew diverged into nine countries. One of them uh, is the way because it. One of them is this way because of a corp. They are United Socialist Nations. Okay, so it's got all the... I'm just going to skip this. But it's got all of the nations there if you want to read that. Because there's a lot of uh, lot of uh, extra lore there. But yeah, I'm actually going to choose to skip that. Because I can't say half the damn words for a start. <laughs> I do apologise. Uh, move on to the planet, because so, that's what our main focus is. So, next up we got uh, Lamaratas. Also known to have intelligent life. This semi... 
semi-oceanic planet with millions of islands just passed by an ice age, and basically that's the reason of its high sea level. The name origin of this comes from the famous Lamertus Archipelago from the Jurassic Park franchise. Uh, Lamertus has a moon named Nubula, um, with the human name being a reference to Jurassic Park. It has some um, dim rings. Okay, so there it is. Then its moon is there. Nedla. So it's an asteroid moon. Okay. Cool. Then we got this one over here. There's no description for that one though. Okay. So we've done that one, haven't we? Lamatus, yeah. Then you got all of its moons in there as well. Cool. Or the natural sat or then the uh, man made satellites. Okay. Uh, moving on, we've got Laja Laranja Gigante. Its name literally means giant orange. All its satellites are captured objects. So there it is. So a very frozen up world. There's its uh, moons. So just, just asteroids, aren't they? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Next up, we've got this one. So this is uh, Gigan Gigantium. Gigantium. A Jovian gas giant a little bigger than Jupiter, although it doesn't have the same Trojan asteroids problem. Like Jupiter and Neptune, it has a giant storm known as the Brown Figure. It has a... that's which this this line here probably is, actually. That's pretty cool. Uh, it has a moon full of giant frozen oceans called Para, Para Europa. Where is that? Is that the, this one? No, that's Giganymede. <laughs> Where's the Europa one? Can't find it. Is it further out? Oh, there it is. A more massive and closer moon named Gigamanti and some smaller moons named after important marks in Brazilian history. Five of the smaller moons are classified as major moons. Gigantum has rings. Okay. There's Europa. There's the Ganymede. So it's the Ganymede's actually liquefied. Pretty cool. And there's some other moons in there. So there are asteroids in those rings. Bigger ring system than Jupiter by the looks of it. Then we've got a load and load of objects out here. All minor, all minor objects. So, cool. Okay. So, okay, next up we've got a tractor. It's a planetary observer there. Uh, a tractor is uh, this one. Dark purple. Pretty cool. The planet's name literally means a tractor for messing with Andrew's spaceship, having a black and purple coloration. The Andrew names, or... Planisians, however you want to call them, only know the attractor's existence by the planet's interference on the spaceship's trajectory when it's slowed down. A tractor has a belt, big ring system, and a moon named Dit Ditto, which is there. Cool. Next up, we've got Nibiru. So that's a name we uh, definitely know. Nibiru. Uh, so, there's another world here. There's no mention of that. I bet it's the red one, isn't it? No, no, it isn't. Okay. Where's Nibiru? Done the purple one. That's that one. Where is it? So is it? Not this. Not that one. Murio. It's a lot of skipping a lot of worlds. Where is the Nibiru? There it is. A massive jump out to this one. Complete darkness here. You can see its picture there. Most certainly the cause of strange orbits of Minust, Midata. So they're all the worlds we've just gone past. The planet is ejected from the inner friends of solar system during the nice model of the solar system. The attractor made Gigantum's orbit further away and more stable than before, and by ejecting this planet in the process as moons named uh, by conspiracy and hypothetical objects or hippophical objects like its name origin. Okay. There are some dwarf planets which probably some some of them probably have originated from the inner threat solar system during the system's formation, but were ejected by Giga Gigatum. But only the remnant of that being Rosos, which is the planet closer to the star. Okay. It says Nibiru there. So we've got another world further out. So what is that? So this is the furthest of the planets. It's not letting me click on it. Look, that's so strange. Why is it doing that? There it is. Friend Sedna. <laughs> it's a Sedna. Hey. Oh my god, look at all these. Technically not a dwarf friend because the size is comparable to Vesta. But there's no category to fit it in. The furthest object away, being at a distance of 1585 AU from the start, is proven that the object has ice under the surface. Okay. 
And the rest of these are all just dwarf planets, aren't they? But we kind of skipped a bunch, so where are we? So we... There's Nibiru there, so we looked at the... The last planet was this one, wasn't it? Yeah, a tractor, so we did the Nibiru one. So there are some dwarf planets, so then we got Dole's Myla, the closest planet to French. So, so where's that? Oh, we're going back in now. As so we got this one here. Have we hang on? Oh, I'm confused. The closest dwarf planet to French. Oh man, uh, labels. What labels on? There we go. That's easy to find them this way. Where is it? Let's look up here. Begins with a D. D O. Oh, this one. So it is there. Closest planet to having a purple coloration on its surface and their composition to the rings of Lemetas. Making the scientific speculate it originated by the junction of fragments from a moon that has, could have been broken due to Rouge limit. Okay. Then next up we've got Osiris. Os Osiris. O-S-I. There it is. The largest dwarf planet of the system being only around the same size as Iris. It's the only trans Atronian object to have be planified in stable orbit due to not being affected by the NICE model in the system event that ejected Nibiru to the outer orbit. Okay, cool. So it has three moons around it as well, so you can see them all there. There's one, two, and then the third one is very, very dark in the... There it is. There's the third one there. Next up we've got Parahumea. P-A-R-A. -A. Um, no, it's not there. It's nothing we're getting with P. Um, okay. Oh, there it is. Why is that not showing up on the listen? That's really weird. So there it is. Hang on, that's just the gas job. Where, where is it? I did click on it. That one. I want that one. There you go. An object with a very fast rotation, strange shape, origin of the name. The object has two little moons. Okay, hang on, let's just accidentally press play there. I've seen if it was going to spin. But yeah, we're going too slow, that's fine. Okay, there's the moons. Next up we got Andolia and Lodiurix. Let's go over there. So it's got two moons as well. Where's that other one? Was that the Lodorix one there? Probably a binary system that will not last so long because the absurd distance between one another. It has a very large crater on its surface, likely the cause of its strange rotation inclined 90 degrees and the existence of its satellite, Meluna. So this is in a binary of another object that's really far away. Okay. So there's the other one. Cool. Next up we got Tahois. Tahois. But I'm completely sorry for my butchering of every word in this system. I do apologise. Not much to say about it, but the part, the object is in the region of the system classified as the twilight zone, where light from the star becomes dimmer. Okay. Next up we've got Murio, also named Craterland. Where's Murio? There it is. It has giant uh, plateaus and large craters spinning all around its surface. It has a generically... Genetically... Uh, Generically named moon that has the same strategy of by name and make 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 satellite. Okay, MU two. Okay, and we got Mars CEO over here. Oh, so weird how the game does that. Almost in a binary orbit with its moon Abro, they are strangely. Let's just get it up. You can see. Shailene has an atmosphere being composed mostly of methane. But the other one, the Abro has one that is more of carbon dioxide. Okay, so a small little object there. Okay. Next up, we've got Nellos, a dwarf planet with a lot of rich metals on the crust and mountains fully composed of nickel and copper. All of its moons have very simple names. Nellos. Down here. That's in the darkness as well. You can see non ses vaton. Maybe that means a word in another language. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, mid data, just a yellow cratered object. And then we already checked out the last object. Let me know if you like the thing. Okay, sweet. 
So that's the whole system. Let's get them all lined up. So we finish up. So you can see a lot of rings. Let's get rid of those. Let's clear it out. Purple gas shine. That looks great. I really, really do like that one there. I, I did like this Gigantomy. The Giga, the Giga Ganymede. That, that's really, really cool as well. Very, very nice. They're probably my personal favourites in the system there. But yeah, guys, let me know what you thought of this system down below in the comments as well. And again, a massive thank you to the creator of this system. So his name was uh, Kamar Kamarada de Pickle Horb. Massive thank you to them for sending this system in. And yeah, if you enjoyed it, let's see if we can go for 100 likes on today's video, guys. Subscribe for more. Helps on the journey to 30,000... 30,000, 40,000 subscribers. <laughs> so 40,000 subscribers. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for the 30k. I've not forgotten. I just need to get a weekend dedicated to it. So yeah, stay tuned for that as well. But with that all said and done, guys, make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.